I just happened to take a 100 biomarker Randox report and I got it for $395. And if I were to try and do that here in the US with LabCorp and Quest, it would cost me what I, I think thousands of dollars. Is yeah. that correct? Well, close to 2000 probably, if not more. Check this out. Oh, so I this see. is what I look like. So I think I'm super healthy. But looking at 100 biomarkers gave me insight. I was told that I could look into my future health. I'm like, whoa, I thought I was the healthiest guy on right. the planet. Genetically and evolutionarily, we are not really designed for long health. And then obviously the biggest part is testosterone and muscles. The whole credo of longevity medicine is do not lose muscles. So can a well person come to you and try and look into their future? Health? Well, absolutely. I mean, that's the preferred scenario. You know, people say I've had very little symptom or no symptoms yet, and I want to know where I'm at. And that's where we should actually be. We should take control of our health and our future. Oh my God, that's brilliant. As Adash goes, don't die of something stupid. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us at Health Geniuses. I'm sitting here with Dr. Gruen, a graduate with a medical degree from the University of Heidelberg. His specialty is in preventative and longevity medicine. And we're gonna be talking today a little bit about what we can do to live a little longer. I just happened to take a 100 biomarker Randox report and I got it for $395. And if I were to try and do that here in the US with LabCorp and Quest, it would cost me what I, I think thousands of dollars. Is yeah. that correct? Well, close to 2,000 probably, if not more. Check this out. Oh, so I this see. is what I look like. All right. Okay. Very good. Great. So Thank I you. think I'm super healthy. But looking at 100 biomarkers gave me insight potentially right. into my future health. I'm so curious as to what it is that you focus on in terms of both longevity and uh, preventative medicine. So I want to hear everything you have to say and obviously we're going to go through my report and see if we can sure, figure absolutely. some things out. Yeah, knowledge is power and the more we know the better. So that's where these markers come in so we call that biomarkers. In order to figure out where you are health-wise you want to know where you stand and that you know are as simple things as your weight or your waist circumference or your grip strength or you know how you perform in the gym these are yeah. all biomarkers but then there are all kinds of medical biomarkers which go beyond what normally labs do which are more pathology oriented you know oh, wow why are you thick so we are looking more at potential things that come to bear in 10 20 30 years because ultimately you don't want to die of something prematurely which you would know already or did know already since 20 years. Yeah. Um, but you said something very interesting. You said upstream. Right. And looking 10, 20 years down the line. Right. And I thought that this is the thing that compelled me to do this. I was told that I could look into my future health. Right. And then I was told that I could get an order of magnitude more results. Correct. For an order of magnitude less cost. Right. And I thought, okay, well, Geez, longevity and sexiness right. and fun. Exactly. Um, so what do you think is the key biomarkers that people who are listening are missing when they go to the regular doctor visits? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's many things. We look at oxidative stress, we look at inflammation, we look at the metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, hormones, big time, you know, at a certain age, hormones become very important. So the normal medical markers address some of them, but not many of them. They're like PSA, cholesterol, right. Right. Exactly right. vitamin D. Those are right. the ones that I usually get. Yeah, and, and some of them not even vitamin D. I think I, at my urologist, I paid $800 for that test, and I right. got like four results. Right. So tell me a little bit about your practice and are you going to be doing these types of tests for clients? Yeah, yeah, I do that already. So we look at Corvenzi. I mean, it's individualized, it's tailored to whatever patients have, but it looks at the underlying factors as much as we can, you know. So, so walk me through that. So I come in, I'm your patient, right. and I say, Dr. Gruen, I want to extend my life 10 right. years. I want to have well, a good erection. Yeah, exactly right, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, I mean, good erection is something I run into frequently, right. yeah, obviously. Most people come up with symptoms. And the tricky thing where it falls a little bit under the table in Western medicine is these diffuse symptoms. You know, and I'm not feeling quite well. Right. I'm a little bit tired, you know, I'm a little bit down. I'm not totally vital. You know, Western right. medicine doesn't quite know what to do with that, but it's for people, it's extremely important because it's their life, their yeah. life quality. That, I feel like that's one of the first things that we experience. 
we come in with low energy. Right. Right. Perfect. You feel low energy, but then by the time you come in and try to do something about it, that's like five years later. Right. So can a well person come to you and try and look into their future? Well, absolutely. I mean, that's the preferred scenario. You know, people say I've had very little symptom or no symptoms yet, and I want to know where I'm at. So your scenario wanting to know how you can live healthy into your 90s or even longer is, uh, is exceptional. And that's where we should actually be. We should take control of our health and our future and know our tendencies, know our vulnerabilities. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Knowing my vulnerabilities, I work out so much right. that so many of my results right. are talking about muscle damage or muscle fatigue or the various hormones that are associated with probably too much working out and also I'm doing some EMS and I've noticed that that's showing up in my reports as like muscle tear right. and fatigue. What are some of the things that you worry about though? Let's say like if you get my report, what are the things that are, are the most alarming or most cause for right. concern? You know, obviously you're always oriented towards the diseases that are frequent and which is basically Heart disease, yeah, killer number one. Right. So you want to make sure there's no tendency towards heart disease because that is nearly preventable. Yeah, if you go in early enough and take the necessary steps, lifestyle and supplementation and medication potentially, you will be able to reduce your risk of heart disease, which then accumulates obviously 50s, 60s more, 70 more, 80 more. As we grow older, we have this increased risk of Heart disease, so you want to be on top of it, yeah? As Adash goes, don't die of something stupid. Yeah? Right. Which I knew since 30 years. My heart is a mess, yeah, by the exactly. way. So I, I um, just and saw look, that. I, I had no idea, right? I know, I know. So I took the Randox test, and it's the first time right. that I'm like, whoa, I thought I was the healthiest guy on right. the planet. But do you, do you mind me yeah, going please, over Yeah, please, I'm happy I mean, to share. Your heart health section here on the test, you know, <laughs> number one, Obviously, your cholesterol, total cholesterol, is too high. It's in the low 300s. Why, why is it too high? What am because, I doing? Because, well, most likely these values are genetics. Yes. You know? So you have genetics, you have family history, yeah, yeah. heart disease. Is there any heart disease? No, no heart disease, so, but I think we're all high cholesterol. Right. And obviously, you know, lifestyle can compensate for that, but <laughs> this high levels is genetic. Yeah. You know, it's a strong genetic part. Your good cholesterol is not all too high. And then I look, you know, with all this cholesterol and good and bad, and people have this idea that if they have high good cholesterol, the bad cholesterol really doesn't count or they can compensate for that. And that's not really true, you know? Okay. So you have to really look at your so-called bad cholesterol, LDL, mm -hmm. is 249. And the newer marker, and Randox uh, does it very well, is ApoB. You know? So look at that. Your ApoB should be low 100, ideally, 110, 120. Yeah. Look at this. You're 170. 171. Right. And that is an overall marker that what tells that me you have a tendency that this cholesterol drives inflammation in your arteries okay. and you have a higher risk of heart disease, stroke, and uh, all the things you don't want to have oh. yeah? Yeah. later on in life. Oh, so this is important. And then what I look otherwise at is a genetic marker, which is called lipoprotein little a, yeah. and yours is high too. So this is a genetic thing. Yeah. Right? Lipo A is worse than LDL, so it's on the negative yeah. side. So these two markers, which normally we don't do, or some cutting edge doctors now do ApoB and Lipo A, but most doctors don't, wow. tell you already the story. And that's only because yeah. of the Randox. Th this test. is the included in this comprehensive. I mean, wow. they do all the other markers and cell size and particle size and what have you. This is number one, and that's probably the most important old fashioned thing, not yeah. sexy. Yeah? You have a high risk what of heart disease. Well, you have to probably do this. So, number one. <laughs> no more French fries. Number one, <laughs> you should look at. The status, how old are you now? Uh, in your, do I want to tell In your decade, in the I, decade, I around... I in my 50s. Around 50s, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, do, we don't care so much I'm about... I'm 53, actually. We don't care so much about chronological <laughs> age yeah. anymore. Anyway, we care about biological yeah. age, you know, so that's a whole other story. So I understand that you're yeah. still apprehensive. <laughs> um, but so the first thing would be to actually see where your arteries are right now. You right. Know? So for example, to get a corrected ultrasound. Yeah which is not invasive, or to do what's called a coronary calcium scan, right. which looks at calcification in your heart, and see, is there already something there? Okay. You know? And then you have to make a decision, is that something you want to now do? I mean, obviously lifestyle, basic, yeah, so eating lots of greens, eating healthy, no junk food, 
uh, or lots of fiber, all that stuff, you know? Shoot, that's my whole lifestyle out the window. <laughs> I know, I know. But with your values, you know, and that is another, you know, tricky point, because many people, especially in the preventative field, don't like medications, you know? Yeah. But with these sky-high things, yeah. you might, at a certain point, think about preventative, you know, statins or medications, potentially. I re exercise about three times a day, right? right. So I'll do 90 minutes of yoga, right. I'll do an ocean swim, right. and then I'll do this EMS thing, which I've right. recently started. My instinct is that I don't have a heart problem, right? but the results are telling right. me I do. Right. How do I reconcile that? I mean, there are people who have sky-high risk factors yeah. and live till 90, okay. you know? Or like, you know, they always say my grandfather smoked two packs a day, you right. know, and died with <laughs> 95, you know? Obviously, right. but statistically, you have a higher risk. And yeah. that means if you have a healthy lifestyle, then that will bring that risk down, down. you know, because okay. you'll have lifestyle and your exercise bits collateral, so your heart is not so vulnerable and what have you. But nevertheless, you yes. know, you do have this high risk and your lifestyle might or might not be able to compensate for that. That's why you have to be on top of that stuff and measure your heart markers and look at it and see what's really happening on the ground, yeah, which is in your arteries. I would have never known. You I have, of course not. I, I had no of idea. Of course not. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I also am showing some liver So stuff. let me go a little um, bit further into that thing. Yeah, so liver is interesting. You know, that's a little bit surprising. So your ALT is high, which is one of the liver enzymes, and the other liver enzyme is high too, which is called AST. And then the question is, First of obviously, how much alcohol do you drink? <laughs> Here we uh, go. <laughs> I have an Irish partner, so I drink a lot. Okay, uh, so that yeah. would explain that. It means, okay. you know, potentially there's some potentially fatty liver disease. Okay, I'm pretty sure I have fatty, fatty liver disease. So you have to cut that down, okay. yeah? And, uh, and, but often, you know, we see 33%, 30% somewhere in that vicinity of Americans have fatty liver, not alcoholic fatty liver, because they eat too much junk food, too much starches, too much sugar. So it's a metabolic fatty liver, okay? I might have that too, I and think. And that might be on top yeah. of it if you're lots of starch and lots of sugar, okay? And that's what many people also don't know, you know, because obviously if you have fatty liver, it's not a healthy proposition. Yeah. And that adds to my weight gain, right? Like, and so that like, will help like add when to I, your weight. I mean, you don't yeah. really have that problem. Creatinine kinase just means you worked out the day before okay. and that. Okay, good. Because that's I'm how like, you build muscles. Yeah. You, know, you injure muscles, you build muscle. You know, so that so, would be a context of that. It's sky high. You must have really ripped. Is yeah. that right? You're yeah. pushing it. Yes. Yeah. Three workouts a day. But so <laughs> if somebody else who gets their Randox report looks at their creatine. Yeah, creatinine kinase. Yeah. Cretine kinase, yeah, yes. and it's high, right. and they don't work out, right. then that's a cause for well, concern? Well, there's rare, you know, muscle diseases can okay. be the case, you know, where muscles disintegrate and so on, that would okay. be part of it. But for most people, you it's know, working I see out. that in the bodybuilding okay, community, you know, that's just part of it. So that's not a concern. Brilliant, yeah? good. Not Thank a concern you. One thing, one exactly. thing I'm not worried about. One, one less, exactly. I noticed that it said high calcium. Yeah, the high calcium. What's that about? Well, it could be your parathyroid hormone. Yeah, some okay, people yeah. who have an overfunction, hyperfunction of the parathyroid gland and that absorbs too much calcium. Oh Sometimes it's just nutritional, okay? Okay, good and news. Then, then they looked at uh, inflammation, so that's a strong part of you, you know, with working out. All your inflammation markers are low. Oh. And that also is good for the heart disease. So here's the risk factor, which you have for right, cholesterol. Genetics. But at least there's no inflammation, so this thing is not quite driven as much. Okay, brilliant. Because it would be otherwise, yeah? Brilliant. Otherwise, your immune system, your immune globulins are fine. Your yeah, thyroid, thyroid look good. Thyroid right? looks lo lovely. Your male hormones, testosterone, fine, you know, working out. Yeah. brings testosterone up. Okay. I, it used to be over 800. But it, it's, yeah, I now see it's that. Like but five you know, something. I remember when I was in medical school, I, was, I think I was 21, and they said, well, testosterone starts going down from the early 20s on. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally depressed. So, but but every decade is lower. Let me know? ask you a question about testosterone, because everyone's talking about testosterone. Testosterone right. supplementation, right. testosterone right. augmentation. Right. I know that women are boosting testosterone right. as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about why is testosterone such a significant factor in health? Number one, genetically and evolutionarily, we are not really designed for long health. 
you know. Right. I mean, life is all about reproduction. Right. So once women go beyond their reproductive years, you yeah. know, menopause or us guys get in the 50s and 60s, we are not really supported from our body to turn old. So hormones go down decade by decade with women with menopause obviously dramatically. Right. But for us guys, every decade lower and lower. And at a certain point, testosterone, you are so low that testosterone does not drive your libido to some degree drives your brain, there's testosterone uh, receptors in your brain and your, your motivation and drive and right. interest. And then obviously the biggest part is testosterone and muscles. Yeah? So the whole credo of longevity medicine is do not lose muscles. Okay? Right. And if you look at anybody who is in the 70s and 80s, you look at them and you know there's more fat and often there's a belly and there's the skinny, sticky legs and people lost muscles, it's called sarcopenia. <sighs> yeah? or even, so testosterone, if you don't have testosterone, you will fall into that trap in your 60s, starting, in, starting sometimes in your 40s, yeah. 50s, 60s, 70s, you have more fat and more muscles, you might have the same weight you had when you were 20, when yeah. you were 50, but there's more fat and less muscle. Yeah? And that's why testosterone is so important. And then that's testosterone replacement, obviously, potentially as cream, and that is a safe uh, therapy. As a cream? Transdermally, yeah. Trans what, what is the palette. optimal testosterone number well, for someone in this 50s? I can't tell you how many people I have who are in their 30s, and they're totally stressed out, and they don't sleep, and uh, are nutritionally not well supported, and the testosterone level is in the 70s, the testosterone level in the 200 range, 300 range. It's crazy, right. you know? So once people then change their lifestyle, work out, yeah? Bodybuilders, gotcha. I have a few bodybuilders in their 70s, they have a testosterone of 800. Wow. Yeah? That was so me just like that would, a couple would help months you, ago. Obviously, you know? So you don't want to tip below the lower range. It depends a little bit from lab to lab. Here it's you know close to 200, you don't want to go below 200. But it's a clinical decision. You know, do you have muscles? I look at you, yes, obviously. Yeah. Do you feel vital and vigorous? Yeah. You yeah. see, there's a few questions. I have too much sexual already. desire. Right. So don't then forget about <laughs> testosterone for you, yeah? I, gotta I mean, your levels are good. Yeah. Sorry. You know, it's funny that um, conversationally, I heard that you had said, which was the first time that I really understood why this was important, was in relation to what you just commented on, which was muscle health is that the older you get, if you have less muscles or less strength, you fall. Yeah, well, that's true too. And then you've got yeah. an injury. Yeah. And now you are you can't get out of that right. cycle that's of correct. injury. That's correct. I mean, that's the drama of old age. You know, people fall and then in their 70s or so, 80s, you know, people then have a often life expectancy of a year or two right. after a severe fall and fracturing their hip. You know, so it's traumatic. Let me ask people. you a question. Is, is bone density, like, can yeah. I do anything to make my bones tough and resilient? Yeah, yeah well, you're doing it already, you know, working out. Working out. I mean, out. that's, you know, bone is a living tissue. You build muscles, you build bones. Okay. In general, you know, I mean, that's medication. And, you know, normally we don't do bone density testing, guys, which is actually an error. I and mean, if you just look at you, I know already you have good bones. Right. Because right? you have good muscles. Right. But in bone density, due to the lack of Does, estrogen goes down dramatically. Do we that's do bone not, density? No, no that's oh, a, okay. a DEXA test, yeah, that's an okay. X-ray test. Oh. A CT, a modified form of right. CT that then looks at the density of your bones. So the sex hormones are great and uh, there's ways to stimulate sex hormones, but you know... Wait, how the, do I do that? Well, <laughs> you don't if, need it, you if, don't need it. But if I was someone who wanted well, to... Well, you know, people come in the 30s, 40s, say, give me testosterone, right. okay, because they read about it. But you have to be careful because you get testosterone from the outside, yeah. you know, through the skin normally or the pellets, your body will shut its production down. Gotcha. Okay, so then they say with 45, we want to have children. Well, their testosterone production and sperm production is shut down because they take this external testosterone. Right. So you have to be very careful. You know, if someone is in their 50s, so the first principle would be to try to stimulate your testosterone to some of the precursors, DHA, pregnenolone, lifestyle, exercise, eating enough protein, you know, all that stuff. Protein as in like steak? Protein as in eggs, eggs, soy, soy all the meats, all the meats. chicken, fish nuts you know so you can do vegetarian but often vegetarians do have a hard time getting enough protein you know and most people don't get enough protein yeah i did vegan for 18 months right. and i started to lose what i felt was 
some vitality. Right. I, I started to, and I just, I personally, I love the idea of vegetarianism. Right, of obviously. course. But just my health started to suffer, so I went back. Right. I did notice that fertility and celiac is a big thing. Like, I heard that if you have three miscarriages, you should do a celiac test. That's correct. Or, you know, and celiac, or even gluten sensitivity will drive autoimmune disease and potentially drive infertility. Yeah. So, so someone who's like about to say they go to a fertility clinic, they're trying to get pregnant, they're about to spend a hundred grand on IVF, maybe they should do a celiac test first. Yeah, and normally that is done in this case. It is done. They do that, yeah. Okay, one last embarrassing thing, because I noticed that we're almost out of time here. Right. As I mentioned, I've got this new EMS thing, and it's electrocuting me on 18 spots. And there's some minor trace elements of blood in my urine, says in the report. Oh. I looked it up, and I was like, okay, that's associated with the EMS, or... I don't think so. I mean, you. the first thing is always, you know, to look, obviously, whether you... I mean, it could be mechanically, you know, I just had sex the day before, yes, so okay. that's that. Yeah. Sometimes it is in women, obviously Probably. it's menstruating or being close to right. menstruating. Okay, and then otherwise, but it could be a kidney stone, yeah? So you yeah, always right. have to be concerned of a kidney stone. Okay. So normally when people have repeatedly uh, blood in their urine, then they have to see a urologist or a nephrologist just to make okay. sure there's nothing else or blood okay. issues, you know. So Dr. Gruen, what else is there that we can do with your practice to make sure that we're achieving the future health span that matches our lifespan, yes, because I'm right. obsessed with this health Very good span point. idea, Very right? Good can, maybe you can share with your audience, you know, the difference between lifespan and health span. Right. So, I mean, if you look at 100 years ago, the average life expectancy was about 54. Now it's close to 80, men a little bit shorter, women a little bit longer. But the drama and the dark side of us living longer is that many people in the last 10, 20 years of their lives, starting in the 60s, cannot really enjoy it because why? They're chronically sick, yeah. okay? And they get more frail and have any life quality and they ache and in pain and in misery, yeah? So that's where the idea is that your health span, that means how long you're vital and healthy and enjoying your life, should be close to your lifespan. So you should be fully vital. I mean, obviously there's some differences between 8, 20 and 70, but nevertheless, you should be vital and have fun and be fully functional until the very end of your life. Yeah? And uh, you know, what I realized is that that is your ultimate wealth. That's your ultimate wealth, exactly right. It's like being exactly vital, right. fun, enjoying exactly your right. life. So yeah. without your health span, you actually, it doesn't matter how much money you have, yeah. Yeah. You can't really enjoy it. Exactly I know so many right. people that are in, infirmed, essentially. Well, that's, and that's a, sad, it's a very sad story. So I'm going to come to your office, and we're going to take some measures. Is right. there other things that can yeah. be done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do the Randox test with all these multitudes of mark biomarkers. Then we look at, look at organic acids, which are intermediaries of metabolism, which gives us another layer of the puzzle. Okay, organic acid testing that go, talks about oxidative stress and mitochondrial health, for example, which is very important for energy production, mm. and so on. And then we look at biological age, you know, so there's an epigenetic clock, so-called epigenetic clock. You can actually, through a simple blood test, figure out where your biological age is. So that means where you are really functionally, so, right. so, say. so let's say someone is 50, but they are weak and not healthy, so their biological age is closer to 60, or somebody's 50 and then top shape. And What's my biological age? age? Well, you're younger than your, your <laughs> chronological my, age. My hair just looking, says... <laughs> just looking at you, you know, so... But there's, we give you a number, and then we also see whether you currently, how fast you're aging, you know? So for every life year, are you aging one and a half years, or are you aging whatever, six, seven, seven months? And that's where we want to be, so that our biological age is 5, 10, 15, you know, some people claim even 20 years, can be 20 years younger really? than our chronological age. So wow. we look at that, and then we ultimately look at body fat evaluation, bioimpedance test that allows us to see visceral fat, so the fat around your organs. So it turns out the fat under your skin is 
health-wise not so problematic, but the visceral fat is, and oh. it also shows how much muscles you have and too much fat and too much. You know, I want to do that. Not, not your problem. I want to do that yeah, now because okay. I, I do think I have visceral fat. these are the areas uh, we're looking at, so we get a very comprehensive evaluation of a person. I honestly want to come to your office because I personally, obviously, am obsessed with biological age. Right. And the ultimate wealth, so I want to attain it. Right. And so I'm going to come visit you at the KO Institute. And if anybody out there wants to come see Dr. Gruen, please visit Dr. Gruen at the KOinstitute.com and set up a program. Okay. Lovely. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Lovely Dr. Gruen. Appreciate okay. it again. You're right. Take good care.